Hey guys, before we get the show started, I'm going to ask a quick, quick favor from you. Can you please take a survey at podsurvey.com slash cult? It takes less than five minutes. It's completely anonymous. You don't have to put in any information if you don't want to. It just helps match this podcast with advertisers that would want to advertise on this show. Five years ago, I started a podcast before anybody was doing this kind of thing. And now I get the opportunity to make a little money from it, which is nice. And it really, really helps. You don't have to put your email. If you want to, they're giving away a $100 Amazon gift card every single month. It's the only reason why they're taking your email. Also, if you've done this survey before, they've updated it a little bit. So if you could take it again, P-O-D-S-U-R-V-E-Y.com slash Colt. And you get to, at the end, you get to see where you match up and like who's listening to the show, what kind of people are listening to the show. I know 7% are women. There's only 7% women. I appreciate your help and enjoy the show. This is the Art of Wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. All right, the music is starting. Matt Jenkins has done his intro, and we're about to get into it. This is the Art of Wrestling, professional wrestling podcast. It's a life podcast. It's personal journal. It's an entryway into the minds, souls, hearts, and lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Colt Cabana. I represent a city that has won a championship. I am usually really not into sports that much, but uh, this playoff season, I got into it. I watched all the games. I felt like I was a part of the team and part of the city, and now we are victors. That's who I am. I am a victor, which is funny because a lot of people seem to think I look like a Connor. Handful of you guys will get that joke. I hope more than a handful, but you get the idea. Most importantly, though, I am a professional wrestler, and I am sitting here live in the studio. Apartment in Chicago, Illinois. Before we go any further, this is a fan support and listener supported podcast supported by people just like you. We give it to you free of charge every single Thursday. ColtCabana.com, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcasts from. A couple of great ways that you can support, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Tell a friend via social media, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Periscope. Or if you got a couple of bucks in your pocket, head on over to ColtMerch.com and DigitalColt.com. T-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, digital downloads. Marty and I have done two more wrestling movies for $5 movies on digital downloads i think you'll enjoy it if, if you're the if you're the ones that have been enjoying those uh look forward to some new ones great ways to support coltmerch.com digitalcult.com okay there's a couple of things that i want to get into for this week's podcast justin gabriel aka now known as pj black the darewolf if you will was on the show I don't know if I made a mistake. I don't know if I did something controversial. I don't know if I did the right thing or maybe I did the right thing and maybe I showed my human side and maybe I just showed who I was as a curious person. You're going to know exactly what I get into. It has to do with death, which is kind of interesting on the uh, on the heels of Dusty Rhodes passing away where a lot of people have really taken that to heart. Uh, Justin comes on the show and um, talks about uh, a passing and a death that is way, way, way more personal, crazier, and um, I don't even know. I Just when it hit me, I didn't even know what to say. So I can only imagine what he has to say, and I think I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that on the outro as we leave, so don't leave as we talk about it. Very courageous for him to come on. I do appreciate it. You really enjoy this episode. And again, I think it proves the direction that I'm looking to go for in this podcast. We don't even talk about anything WWE for the most part. And I think at the end he was kind of surprised, like, oh, I, I had all these WWE stories and all these NXT stories. But for me, it's the journey. Why are we doing this? How are we doing this? For for what reasons? What's going through our heads? What brings us to a place? What gets us to this point in career where we're known enough, but we probably weren't known at a certain time? And how do we drive past that point? I am in the middle of one of the craziest journeys I've ever taken. Um, Not crazy because I'm a crazy man, but just the idea that I decided to go to Germany, to Europe, come home. I'm home for one day. I'm recording this tomorrow. I go to Japan. When you're listening to this, I'll be in the middle of the air doing one show and then coming back and then heading over to a buddy's wedding. And a little bit of me is like, why, Colt? Why, why are you doing this? What, what, come on, man. You're, uh, you're doing all right. You don't need to do this. But yes, I do. I get off on it, man. I get off on the stupid journeys that I'm willing to take. I get off on the idea that my date book is filling up and then I'm putting another date in that date book and I'm challenging myself. Because I want to say I don't think any other wrestler would want to do this. I want to be known as the wrestler that does this. The guy in Munich at the passport control couldn't even find the stamp. I have so many fucking stamps in my passport. And this isn't a braggy thing. It's kind of a braggy thing. I'll take that back. But he was looking for like five minutes for the for the passport stamp. It couldn't find it. it just goes, oh, I'll trust you. Stamps it. And I just thought to myself, man, I could have so 
illegally done some Tom Cruise shit. Because you got to understand, all I do is watch movies on these flights. And I've taken like 12, 12 plus hour flights. And it's just, I've seen so many movies that I just got these weird ideas that I could become this Ocean's Eleven person sneaking into countries with stamps and visas and, and passports. But no, I just I just got on my flight and went home. But last week... I wrestled for WXW and Revolution Pro Wrestling, two of my favorite promotions in the whole wide world. I did two really fun podcasts with people that will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Very excited to to help you guys understand some of the European talent over there. First time in Munich, Germany. Didn't get to see anything. I went to Bremen also, and I wrestled a guy named Eddie Steinblock. And I know a lot of people from Germany and Europe want me to go on this big rant about Eddie Steinblock. A lot of people were excited to hear what I was going to say about Eddie Steinblock. But I can only say this, because um, because who am I to knock somebody down? I mean, I did in the locker room a little bit with... with uh, with some of the guys, you know, just making some fun jokes. But but Eddie's a 60-year-old man. He has five titles, three of which I think are made up. And he's the star of his own show. And last year, he beat Terry Funk. And this year, he, he beat Colt Cabana. I'm not putting myself in the same category as Terry Funk. But the guys come in, and the guys lose. And, and Eddie Steinblock's a big champion over there in Bremen. And you know what? There's going to be a day when I get to his age. And I haven't given up wrestling because it's too much fun. It's too much fun to get in the ring and to get people's reactions and get people going, where it's a known fact that you're going to come to Chicago, you're going to lose to Colt Cabana. Everyone's going to know that Colt Cabana is the king of Chicago, and I'll have the Joliet Championship and the Aurora Championship, and I'll have the Downers Grove Championship and the Deerfield Championship, and I'll have won the Northbrook Lake Forest Cup. And one by one, the stars of yesteryear will come to Chicago at One Hour Tees Arena, and they will lose to the champion, Colt Cabana. I look forward to those days, actually. And so it was nice to wrestle Eddie and almost almost see what my future holds. Song of the Week this week is brought to you by Tops, and they've made the Star Wars Card Trader, and it's the official Star Wars digital trading card app. You can grab it at the App Store and Google Play. We're now collecting cards just like our childhood, but we're doing it entirely online. The Star Wars Card Trader is great for Star Wars fans with your favorite character, vehicles, and locations from the Star Wars universe. Download it today, and for a limited time, get five or more free packs per day. Collect from 30 years of officially licensed Star Wars trading cards from the vintage era, all the way up to Star Wars The Force Awakens. Star Wars Card Trader is currently the only place to get the Star Wars Force Awakens merch. Collect and trade your favorites, Chewie, Maul, Yoda, Jobber the Hutt, or even your favorite moments, locations, and deep cuts. From the team that brought you the award-winning and top-grossing baseball app, Tops Bunt, download Star Wars Card Trader today. Head on over to tops.com slash colt. That's T-O-P-P-S dot com slash lowercase colt. And get started collecting today. All right, Song of the Week this week is by The Black Rats out of Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Buy some of their music at theblackrats.bandcamp.com or on Twitter at Black Rat City. The song is called Hurricane Rana. Enjoy it, and we'll be back with PJ Black. That rhymed, and also PJ Black could be part of Black Rats. See how I mixed it all together? I'm a fucking genius. From Japan to Mexico. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. 
Hey, we're also sponsored today by DraftKings. Baseball is in full swing, and the Cubs have an over 500 record for the first time in a long time, and it's a miracle. DraftKings.com is the official daily fantasy partner of the Major League Baseball. Daily fantasy means no season-long commitments, just instant cash, instant gratification. Why wait till the end of the season to get paid when you can win huge prizes every single day? It's a new season every time you play. Just pick two pitchers, eight position players, and pick up your cash. Last year, Peter from Colorado, not to be confused with Leon White from Colorado, won a million bucks in one day. Simply playing fantasy baseball at DraftKings. Hundreds of thousands of fantasy sports fans just like you have already cashed in. Now it is your turn. New contests start daily. Go to DraftKings.com and use the promo code Russell. Play for free in today's $10,000 fantasy baseball contest. My code is Russell. Plug it in. Go make some money over at DraftKings.com. DraftKings.com. That's DraftKings.com. There, Wolf. Um, adrenaline is your thing. It is. It's not only a gimmick. It's it's me. I know it is. But like, so do you? I don't drink any. I don't drink coffee. I don't take like people. Someone offered me a caffeine pill like before my match yesterday. <laughs> Are you hopped up on all that shit at all times? Uh, up until two years ago, I never, never responded well to caffeine. Never took anything. It was uh, during that time on the road where I was doing five, six matches a week, and pure, not, aka pure pressure. Uh, not, even, not even pure pressure. Like just so, being, it was like try this yeah, Red yeah. Bull with laced with LSD. It was just being frustrated with everything, you know. Like, I'm, wait, I'm not gonna get to do a match today. Your match has been scrapped off Raw again. What the fuck. And so what? So you're like, I'm gonna stay up all night. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it, stay hyped. Yeah, in protest, I'm going to drink ten Red Bulls. <laughs> Are you man? Fuck, because I I don't know. It seems like not like you know like in, in the in the eighties or whatever. Like they all their stuff was just like cocaine and getting yeah. fun. Like I feel like right. these wrestlers we just uh, we substituted it with uh, Red Bull. With Red Bull, yeah. We didn't have any other stuff in in Africa either. So to me, this is a whole new world in the U.S. It's great. Yeah, man. When, well, when I moved over here for the first time, you know you know what got me is uh, I went to the grocery store to buy peanut butter and orange juice. Those are the two items I needed. Two items that you knew that you knew, like, oh, I think that these Americans have this also. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and each one of those items had a whole aisle. See where I'm from? There's like one brand of each. Yeah. I was just like, oh, wait, wait, what, what, what? Which brand do I want? You know, like, were you like America? Yeah. Or <laughs> it was insane. No, was it like, w- yeah, was, was it like this place is amazing or this place is fucked up like why would they have so many a bit of both you know it was uh, to me it was amazing i have the oldest choice but i was like reading the labels and stuff because I, I studied a little bit of nutrition reading the labels i was like ah okay a lot of shit in here this is why they want a salad that's why so <laughs> did your body factors. change did i what did your body change in the beginning it did a little bit but, right because uh, it it's all different. If, if if that's true, it's all different nutrients. And we like. Oh yeah, totally. But uh, I mean, I knew enough about nutrition to try and you know like read the labels first and spend a little bit more money on better products. Yeah, I remember uh, Cesaro would always say it was one of the others, but because he would always go to you know he'd go to Japan and he'd be like, and he's like a crazy nutritionist. I don't know how much time he spent with him. Oh yeah, look at his body. You yeah, can tell. yeah. But it, and I remember on the Indies he would like pay for these services that would like help him like on online nutritionists and stuff and like oh, wow i didn't know that yeah and i was like i was always like wow like an indie salary you're still doing this but you know that's how dedicated he was to that lifestyle but i remember he said to go to japan and just yeah. he's like oh guaranteed two weeks three week tour of japan like i know i'm gonna get like super skinny because of the food there and then when i come back i can adjust myself it worked out well for him though yeah well i'm saying but it's, it's, <laughs> you're, you've moved a whole yeah. country over well then then you look at guys like wade and Stu. uh wait same Who's guy the same person <laughs> wade and uh, drew and seamus who moved over and, and all of them picked up like 80 pounds like, yeah instantly because they didn't realize <laughs> yeah god i remember uh and i talked about this with drew he would just sit and eat cartons of cottage cheese yeah yep. yeah yeah <laughs> Thinking that was good. <laughs> Did he, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. All right. So I watched a video the other day. Was that real? Which one? Of you on the bike? Uh, was that not you? I don't remember. On a motorcycle, then you landed on your feet? Oh, no, no. That was me recording my buddy. But like, uh, I, uh, I have two stunt bikes, and we go to these lots, and we 
we ride. That was your buddy who did that. Yeah, yeah. Because he almost died. That. Oh, yeah, yeah. He should have died. Oh, dude. Do you know how... And I'm, you just put it on Instagram going like, hey, look at my buddy landed on his feet. <laughs> yeah. I might have actually said I land on my feet, but that was a... Uh, referring to something else, you know, like oh. landing on my feet on the Indies. Like, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I have a some, metaphor. Yeah, a metaphor. I have some crazy videos which I can show you later. Or I'll, I'll post it on Instagram of me nearly killing myself, and that's why I'm actually getting rid of my two stunt bikes. It's it's time. It's time. So I'm explaining explain this video that I saw. Okay. Well, or I can explain it. Either one. Go for it. <laughs> um, uh, so PJ posts. Uh, I I always land on my feet, and then I assumed it was him because it was a guy in a in a mask <laughs> on a motorcycle trying to do a wheelie. Then the wheelie goes too far backwards, and it goes uh, like more than like 180 degree or like more than ho completely horizontal. Yeah. Starts to do a backflip. He's about to fall on his back. Then I assume puts on the brakes. So then the motorcycle goes forward, but he flies off the motorcycle. Oh, probably to his pending death and then just randomly lands on lands his feet. on his feet, which is amazing, by the way, because that never happens. You know how many guys I've seen like end up in the hospital after that? And, that, and that's another thing. I'm selling the, the bikes because every time I learn a new trick like that, I, I just mess up my knees and my back and I'm like, damn, I got to wrestle this weekend. So yeah. I'll stick to skydiving, you know, where I can just fly. <laughs> I was going to do the Tough Mudder the other day and then I was like, Oh, wait, I can't do that. I'm wrestling. <laughs> but you're jumping out of an airplane. Oh, yeah. That's what I do on my time off. Is that a club? Are you in a club? Um, there's actually a lot of clubs around the U.S. Uh, there's about 39,000 registered divers in the U.S., which is phenomenal. I have this app on my phone. Every city I go to, you can just click, see where the nearest club is or the drop zone. And uh, I got my D license now, which is the highest license you can get. So I can jump anywhere and do fucking anything I want. Yeah, man. You're doing it. Hey, it's cheaper, cheaper it. than crack. It's <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's talk wrestling. Not wrestling, but um, from South South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, Johannes, Johannes? I'm from Cape Town. Cape Town. I did move to Johannesburg when I was 16 because that's where my dad left. My parents got divorced, and he ran a wrestling school there. So I wanted to wrestle. So I moved away from the ocean you know, where I was surfing every day because I wanted to pursue this wrestling thing. And your dad was Pink Panther. That's right. That's... In, did you, I really early on this podcast, I had Ricky Marvin. Do you know Ricky Marvin? Uh, yeah, yeah, I know the name. Ricky Marvin's dad wrestled as Mickey Mouse. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And I always like that. <laughs> like in a perfect world, your, like your dad and his dad uh, tagged up. Yeah, but he was the biggest heel ever, dude, because everyone, you know, South Africa is kind of like a third world country and... Yeah, I, I mean... Kind of conservative. And explain like, my ignorance. Guy wearing pink. Explain my ignorance. I, I don't know... How would you compare South Africa or Cape Town to, I guess, here, America? What I know. Uh, you mean the actual city? I don't know. Just the surroundings? Is it good? Is it bad? Although I, I, I mean, Cape Town is phenomenal. It's, it's actually the top tourist destination in the world for the last 20 years. But then again, you go an hour, two hours north to Johannesburg, the capital where it's the most dangerous city for the last 40 years in a row. And uh, that's actually where my dad got shot. And that's a whole nother story. Um, Cape Town is awesome because it, it's kind of like, imagine Miami mixed with, I don't know, a place like Arizona. Yeah. Ma beautiful mountains, beautiful ocean, just beautiful city. Um, everyone I speak to, that's their favorite place they've ever been to. Ask Rikishi, favorite place in the world? He'll say Cape Town. Brett, favorite place in the world? Cape Town. And you know they just sing it because you're from there. No. To me, they say Chicago. They told me Chicago. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I talked to Brett yesterday. He's Brett, like, Brett, Brett tried to buy a house there. Did he? Every time WWE tours there, he calls Vince and he's like, he, he gets on the tour. He's like, yo, let me just be like a, you know, guest ring announcer or like a timekeeper or something. And he gets on. When you went on the, when you went and toured, was he there? Every single one. Was he there? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. He, the last one, he actually tried to buy a house there. <laughs> I love how he's that much money. I know. <laughs> he's just like, oh. I, he, he actually told me a funny story, too. I don't know how true this is or whatever, but uh, uh, remember when he, he had that feud with Steve Austin? Sure. And uh, apparently he wasn't going to re-sign. And Vince was like, come on, you have to, you have to. You, you know, we need to get this pay-per-view out of you guys. And they were going to go to South Africa and do that whole feud. And it was all going to be on live TV in South Africa, which I was there for. Awesome, by the way. And uh, he didn't want to sign. He didn't want to sign. Something happened where Vince was like, I'll give you anything you want. And uh, he sent Brett to Cape Town to do some uh, some marketing. and uh, Quote, unquote. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he, uh, he ended up staying there. And that was a, back in the time when no GPSs. 
right? So he he drove around Cape Town. Uh, he had Vince's credit card. He he <laughs> he rented a Maserati. Of course, <laughs> drove around Cape Town. Just got lost because he didn't have a GPS, and it just he fell in love with the place. Or the Maserati. Or I, think it, <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a difference if you have Vince McMahon's credit card and a Maserati. Right. To, you and, imagine that? Yeah. Well, he signed, and then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a good move. Um, yeah. So, it, what's the? Is there a wrestling? Did your dad create the wrestling scene, or is the wrestling scene has been going on? No, many people don't know this, but like in this maybe late seventies, early eighties, early nineties, it was actually like like a kayfabe territory mm. like uh a lot of guys like if you speak to finley and regal and all those guys they used to come over and 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 just stay there for a year uh a lot of guys came over but not not many guys knew that because there was no youtube and internet so people couldn't you know i remember hogan coming down and jobbing to our champion just for a quick payday and then leaving so i met hogan i met andre you know as a kid i saw all these matches and i was like who is your champion wait explain kind of our champion at the meaning, time. Meaning you were with your you were with your dad. You no, know, my dad wasn't into wrestling at this time. Uh, he was like, so you met him just as a fan. You mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my dad was kind of like um, transitioning into becoming a pro wrestler at the time. He was a he was like a really badass uh, Olympic wrestler apparently. But like uh, that year that he was going to go to the Olympic Games, South Africa got boycotted because of you know the apartheid era and blah blah blah. So, Don't blab. I know all about this. Okay, <laughs> from uh, that movie with the singer. Yeah, right. Okay, so you know. So uh, what's hold on? What was this? Which singer is it? Uh, the fucking the singer from Detroit. Tell me you saw this documentary. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> something man, Rain Sugar Man, Sugar Man, Sugar Man. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's another, like, oh, I know all the songs to, the, to those. Uh, you knew all of that. All of them. That, that was big. That was huge where I'm from. And if everyone's not seen the movie Sugar Man. It's a documentary. It won the Oscar. You should definitely check it, it out. It won an Oscar? It won the Oscar, yeah. Oh, well, I have, good, documentary. I have good taste. That's a shit. <laughs> so I know about the apartheid. I know. Okay, so, that, pretty, whole, uh, that, so that whole era, like, I met these guys. And uh, do you know the Simpson brothers? Bart and Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, they wrestled uh, maybe 80s, 90s. I, I, well, they're like a weird... Man, maybe were they on like weird UWF or WCW? Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Feuded with the Von Erichs a lot. Okay. And, uh, okay, so Steve Simpson was a freaking awesome wrestler. They were both South African, and their dad ran one of the main promotions in South Africa. Did he like start wrestling there? Or is it, like has been wrestling going on there since Oh, yeah, ever? It's, it's been going on forever. I mean, ever since I can remember. I, I never went too far in the history of it, but uh, I know like the, our champion, that Hulk Hogan. Which, what was his job name? To, his name was Jan Vulkins. Jan Vulkins. And pe people know that know their history. They can go back and they know exactly who he is. And in, in South Africa, like he to was this a, he day? He was a god. He was, till to this day, he's like a king. Like, like, like how people know Big Daddy. He's like a cultural... Yeah, in England, yeah, exactly. right? Yeah, Jan Vulcans was like our version. That's so weird. Yeah. Is there is there weird hipster Jan Vulcan T-shirts now, like in Cape Town? Do you no, think? No, but we should probably bring it back. Should we ship them out, pro wrestling T style? Yeah, like, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm down. I can see that. Yeah. I mean, that's right. If, but I, I don't mean, know how many people would actually remember. You know, like people from that era would remember. Like, I guess like the students coming up now, the wrestlers. I mean, they they know the name, but they never. There's no footage of stuff like that. That's the problem. Like you can't YouTube Jan Vulcans and go watch. It's his not matches. on YouTube. No, but I mean you can find it on these, you know, these wrestling history sites and stuff. You can find it, but it's hard to find. I mean, I have a ton of magazines, like black and white posters and stuff from my dad. That, but nobody. I mean, if he's that big, like people love that shit, the retro stuff, right? Yeah. If he's that big, you wanna. You, you got to figure out like who right who ran the TV stations. This is a, this is a whole project that no, we're getting. There was no TV back then. Oh, there's no TV. No, South Africa is a third world country. See, dude. this is what I don't know. Yeah, Fuck. no TV. Uh, I remember watching wrestling for the first time on TV, and it was uh, WrestleMania four. It was Randy Savage against uh, Teddy Biasi. Yeah, that was the first match they ever televised in Africa, in South Africa. So he was just a star from a traveling roadshow. Basically, yeah. I mean, maybe there was a small TV show. I don't. I don't recall. I mean, yeah, it's, that's a good thing. I got to go look that up. Actually, it's only. But I mean, like, right? Because I mean, people get big through media, almost media. I mean, I, I couldn't even tell you who. Yeah, back in the day, I think newspapers and. Right. Yeah. Like, who, how do people? Real poster postering <laughs> like, oh, this guy's coming to town. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> but how does? 
that originally come like now like we know like oh if someone can go viral on a YouTube like like you said yeah. but like in in vaudeville <laughs> you know like I mean even Charlie Chaplin got it like it took yeah him being on those black and white movies like that's how people blow up but then but again, Vaughn black Wilkins and, yeah <laughs> black and white movies like they there was nothing in South Africa that's why Hogan didn't have a problem like. Yeah, I'll do the job here, get paid a ton, sure. you know, have a quick vacation. Then. Also, that's why he didn't have a problem doing a Japanese commercial about <laughs> baby air conditioners. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To which I now play on my comedy show. <laughs> it is the weirdest thing ever. Hell yeah. Him singing baby commercials. <laughs> um, so wait, Von? Jan Vulkans. I, fuck, I, I, Jan, J-A-N. Uh, oh, oh, John. Yeah, well, yeah, well we say to Jan. Us. Jan. Man, so they had no TV... Nobody was a star. Uh, so American wrestling was the first thing on TV. Uh, yeah, um, but don't quote me on that. It might have been like, that you they, remember. They, I mean, yeah, that I remember. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> and, and and it was and it was that match that I told you about. But my dad already broke into the business because the Simpsons brother, uh, the Simpsons signed. They moved to Texas, right? So their dad kind of like. And I can't not think about like Bart and Homer Simpson as you say this. <laughs> so the uh, it's, it's funny though. You, you ask any old timer, do you remember the Simpsons? They're like, oh yeah, the two South African boys. <laughs> wow. And uh, anyway, so th their dad, when they moved to Texas, the dad kind of sold the company, and my dad took over from them. And there was two other three, two or three other companies running at the time, but my my dad was probably the, the biggest one at the time. And yeah, that's how I got started. Like, <laughs> I remember being like 12 years old and uh, we didn't have a referee for this show. And my dad goes, just just get in there. You, you know how to count. You've watched a lot of wrestling on TV. Just go, go. And I just got thrown into the deep end. Yeah, but you, so you were what? Because you were living with your mom at the time in Cape Town. I was living at with 12. My, uh, yeah, full time. But I would go visit my dad on, uh, on school ho holidays, school vacations. <laughs> and his? And I would go on the on tour with him. I would go on the road with him like... We just be on the road You're nonstop. Like part of the Hart family essentially is like yeah, that's what it is, right? And my dad used to bring a lot of international guys over, so I used to be like the gopher, you know, like these guys would send me to go get stuff. And who would who would they bring over? <sighs> Man, we had uh, we had Yoko a few times. We had uh, at the Tonka used to come all the time. Um, <sighs> Have you been around Tatanka since? Oh, I speak to him here and there. Does like, he remember you? I mean... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was like, oh, you were that 11-year-old boy. You know, a funny story, actually. Um, Drew McDonald, who recently passed mm -hmm. away, I I saw him about two years ago at a show, and uh, I uh, explained to him who I was, and he just looked at me, and you went, and you went, that must mean you're 28 right now. And I was like, yeah. I was like, what a great memory, like he remembered. Because he used to come over and just stay there for like a year at a time. He loved it. Yeah, he loved it. Yeah, I got it. You know, and like when I watch a lot of the old world of sport, you always hear and, and read, like I used to read a lot of, not like a lot of books, but like any information I could find on that era, you'd, and like you said, you'd always hear these guys, but I'd always hear they like traveled to India and like, and, re, and even talking to Regal, he would always talk about the weird places they would go. Oh, ask Regal about South Africa. He'll tell you some cool stories. And, and so <laughs> it's just a touring it's just a touring destination for them. Actually, a funny story. Uh, the uh, the arena that I had my very first match in against my dad, which I'll get into a little bit later, mm -hmm. uh, it was one of Undertaker's first matches too. So I guess... Uh, just in South Africa? Yeah. Like, so remember how I started out? My first match was in like a shitty gym in front of 20 people? Yeah. Like, oh, my first match, uh, they, they sent me from Texas to <laughs> South Africa. Well, what happened was he's been training for a while, and I don't know how many matches he's had. And I, I speak to him about this all the time, and his face just lights up <laughs> like he loves it. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I guess they needed a big Texan guy, and like they sent a, a group of guys over there. And he, was, he's only, he only started training a couple of weeks into training. Uh, my dad said... He, you remember him like taking the first buckle and he fell out of the ring because hmm. he didn't know how to take a buckle. Yeah, and it was in that same that same arena where I had my first match, and everyone remembers that it's a shithole. It's like an old tennis stadium. It's like falling apart. I thought like, everyone remembered that bump that he took. No, but oh. everyone everyone remembers the stadium. Like even Rigo like still asked me. He goes, "Does it still look the same?" I'm like, "Yep, they haven't even painted it." Wow, and it's like, are they uh, still doing events there? Yeah, and that yeah, still when WWE go there. They just kind of like spice it up, and that's where they that's where they run. <laughs> they do WWE there. Yeah, for real. So you your first match was in front of how many people? It was like five thousand people. Come on. I walked out and I froze. It was against my dad, 
I just froze. Was he, it built up as some kind of like father son? No, see, it's not that. The Yellow Panther? And, no, I had a. I, I wore. It had to have been a masked man. A mask. I had a mask with a fucking wig. I had a full full body suit on. I was sixteen at the time. Okay. So. The law says you can only become a professional athlete in South Africa when you're 18. Ah. So I had to like, we had to kind of like, you know, you're a real wear rebel. a mask. Like, mm -hmm. That's where PJ Black came from too. We made up that name and it just stuck ever since. But yeah, I just froze. My dad slid out the ring, just gave me the stiffest <laughs> shot across the face, threw me in the ring and we just started this match. And, like uh, wake up? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, wake up. And he started beating me up. What if mom saw that? Oh, my mom till this day hates wrestling. Oh, she. Uh, I got my degree just to please her. Like she, she's like, you'll never make money in wrestling. And she, 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 she came to WrestleMania a couple of years ago and saw me wrestle for the first time at WrestleMania. So now she's like the biggest fan. Oh, she's in. Yeah. She's like, I told you. Yeah. I told you this would yeah. be good. <laughs> so this match too, right? I, I, I do that springboard moonsault. Did it. Since day one, my dad was like, oh, I'll let you go over with that. And I was like, oh, cool. Never. No one goes over my dad. And, and anyone who broke into the business at that time would wrestle my dad for the first time. He was like a, he was like a, he was a hooker, basically. So, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> Wait, which one? A wrestling term? Wrestling term, yeah. Or a sex term? No, wrestling term. Okay. <laughs> which not many people, people know. Uh, uh, Shooter? Shooters, but not yeah. hookers. And let's. Um, <clears throat> He was pulling his trigger finger to try to think of the word. Yeah. <laughs> What's uh <laughs> just looked like he was fingering the air actually. <laughs> well good pick up on that. <laughs> so he goes, Yeah, do uh do that cool moonsault you do, I'll, I'll let you go over. And I was like, I was stoked. I was like, Okay, cool, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna beat the Pink Panther my yeah. first match. And it was a boxing ring too, mind you, and I do this moonsault and he caught me and he just gave me the stiffest power slam and he was like, Kick out. And I couldn't even like say anything, breathe, or do anything, and I, yeah, I lost. You didn't kick out. No. <laughs> if you ask Adam Rose too, his first match was against my dad. Like if you if you ever come across any South African, his first match would have been against my dad. They've all gone through him. Yeah. How, so uh, where do you get this mat? Like where are you? He just says you're wrestling me tonight. You've been training with him. Yeah. He so he five thousand people. How like how long before? The crowds were never that big, by the way. This was like a once-off thing. We were in Durban in that stadium, where the tennis stadium. Um, and that's too, like we had to venture away from where we normally go. So in case someone would recognize me, you know, so we went to like Durban, which is like five hour drive. This was done just, so this show is done just to protect your identity. Well, this show was actually run by another promoter. And this promoter used to always bring guys from Johannesburg and from Cape Town and from all over. And he used to be like, Look, I'm in the, I'm the greatest in the world. I'm getting all these people to work together, all these promoters, and uh, he 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 used my dad and a few other guys. And my dad's like, I got this new young kid. He's great. He's he's the youngest in in Africa, and blah blah blah. Oh, so you showed up with a mask? Yeah, <laughs> just to protect your head. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was insane, man. Me and my dad were like best friends too. Like we used to tell people that we were brothers. Like he. He never had a drink in his life, you know, he was like this professional athlete, just like, you know, he, he was just, he he looked way younger than he was. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he used to take me to, to, to nightclubs when I was a kid and tell people that I was a midget wrestler. <laughs> so you would stay in your hood? <laughs> no, 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 not when I was a child. But the bouncers would be like, uh, yeah, I guess it's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, what was the level of uh, fame around the, for your dad? Was it more from the, uh, the Olympic wrestling style? Oh yeah. Or was there any? Or was I mean, because you know how like we go to town to town and people are like, Oh, you guys are famous wrestlers, but like sometimes you know, nobody even knows who we are. But yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's a weird line of fame. Well, back in that day too in South Africa, uh if if you have your national colors in any sport, you're pretty well known. You know, and uh my dad was like the the, the captain of the T the the wrestling team and they were gonna go to like I said, the Olympics, but they were boycotted and you know, and uh, the Russian guy who won the silver medal, my dad actually beat him at the world champions later. So my dad was like, man, I could have beat this guy. And, you know, my dad, my dad was a lawyer, but he, uh, he refused to wear a suit. So he started a sports promotions company, which led him to start the wrestling company. And yeah, long story. And fa fa like, is he ever getting recognized outside when you're walking around? Oh yeah, all the time, man. Okay. He was on, he was on like, he was clever. Like he was like the, the cocky heel, the pink panther. Mm -hmm. 
he would never go over. He was never one of those guys who would, uh, you know, win the belt to all the championships at, at his own company or anywhere else. But he would always have the most heat and just be the biggest dick. And he would do, be, if there was an, a TV interview, he would be on it. If there was like some breakfast show wanting to interview a wrestler, he was the guy. You're right. You know, like he was just, people were just fascinated with his, his aura and his, his, his character. What did uh, the Pink Panther wear? A lot of pink. Uh, he had he drove a pink Porsche. <laughs> Our house was pink, dude. Come on, I swear. Living the like Shane Douglas style. Just it, was, it was yellow and black. <laughs> we lived in a castle too, so it was three stories. And then like, oh, all the sympathy imagine, like, I have for you. Live it. You lived in a castle. That, that was my dad. Like my my mom. We were very poor. Uh, <laughs> my dad was just he was a fucking rock star. Uh, <laughs> hold on, hold seven, on. Seven bedrooms. Like we didn't know what to do with all these bedrooms. So you're, when the divorce happened, your mom kind of was poor, yeah, and your dad had a castle and was rich, or tried to pretend like he was rich. He, you know, I never know. Like uh, he was probably pretending to be rich. I mean, he had a little bit of money, but he made some bad mistakes and in investments. And I know that that one day he had nothing, and then the next day he he was like, "Hey, you want some money?" And then you know, St still an enigma to this day. Still, an or you? I mean, you haven't really dug into it. He was a total enigma. You know, I found a room in his house with a bunch of fake passports and guns, and Ooh. I was like, "Who? What is going on here?" Like, at what? You were young. I was young. I didn't understand it. I was kind of like just act like I didn't see it, and I kind of stayed away from it. And, and you've never even like. No, I remember being a kid too, and he uh, he never gave me a hiding. You know, like back in the day, that was you used to spank your kids and stuff, and my mom was like, "Oh." I, Give him a hiding. I don't know what he did wrong, but whatever. My dad would never. He would grab me on my shoulder or my arm or my hand. He would just grab a nerve, like a pressure point, and my whole body would go numb. And I would just lie on the floor and be like, ah, what is happening right now? Like, shit like that all the time. And I was like, fuck, what are, who are you? Yeah. I think you need to, like, <laughs> do you think about, like, going back and doing, like, an investigation? Not an investigation, but, like, getting the bottom of all the stuff you don't know? You know here's another story so when i moved in with him i was on the road full-time for two years uh two, 16 year old wrestler 16 year old wrestler. but going to high school and yeah going, going to, to school so I'd, I'd, my coach would come pick me up friday at school with my my gear bag already packed we would drive the 10 11 hours sometimes to go do the show drive six hours back do another show get me back for school homework was never done bruises everywhere you know <laughs> people were like what do you do and i was like yeah you know rough weekend <laughs> well, you had to keep it quiet yeah, yeah from everyone yeah i could never tell anybody nobody at school knew you were a wrestler nobody nobody knew girlfriends i hardly had any because i didn't have time because on weekends i would be wrestling and in the week i'd play rugby and trying to get my homework done and shit like that um where was I? Oh, sorry, a story about investigating. Oh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> so when I was 18, just about to finish school, uh, my dad got shot in the head right in front of me. Uh, something a, a child should never see. But like my whole world just crashed, you know? Like I didn't know what to do. Everyone expected me to take over the company, which I, I couldn't. I was 18. I don't know what the fuck I wanted to do. I just uh, I had this conversation with him probably about six months earlier that I was gonna quit school because I was gonna become a wrestler because he was gonna send me to Japan for like six months because he had all the contacts and then send me to Germany, you know, he had all the contacts. Do you there. remember like, what Japan contact was? I have no idea. I do remember the guy in Germany's name because uh, his name was Dave Morgan. I don't know if you know that name at all. Mm. He was one of those Connie wrestlers that, you know, back in the day where the, where the, the guy in the ring challenges anybody yes. and he would just fucking, you know, make them tap within 10 seconds mm -hmm. and uh, he, he basically, he trained my dad a lot, and my dad used to bring him out all the time to train the new talent. And he was like 58 years old. He had, he would he would come into the ring with a cigarette, and he would just out wrestle 20 guys and go for like two hours. He's the toughest just fucking a tough tough guy, but a real carny. Mm -hmm. like, Perfect. <laughs> so yeah, when my dad got shot, like I uh, I didn't know what to do. Everyone was like, take over the company. But I, I told him that uh, when we had this conversation, I was like. Uh, I'm gonna drop out of school and he goes no and then you're gonna pay rent you have to finish school so i was like but i'm gonna become a wrestler anyway just send me to germany now he's like no you're gonna finish school so i promised him that i'd finish school so the day he got shot i was in my final exams like i probably had like four or five things to write and since i promised him i finished it but once i finished man i was just 
I was destroyed. So I packed a little backpack, left the country, didn't tell my family, didn't tell anybody. Uh, I don't even know what happened to the company. I just I went to England and I started backpacking through England. Mm. You know, for four years, didn't watch wrestling, didn't do anything. Like I didn't want anything to do with wrestling. And no contact with your mom or yeah, nobody, nobody. I just just disappeared. was there like was, a missing thing on you or I was I was trying maybe probably you know I was I was just trying to you know I was doing some soul searching trying to figure out what I need to do in life and you know I started ending up working at a hotel and then at a restaurant you know I like to pay the bills and blah blah blah. Eventually, I was like, man, I need to, you know, maybe I should go to college and get a degree and, you know, so I can, you know, be something. Mm. I, I ended up studying in, in London, got two degrees, got my master's, which made my mom very happy later on in life. Uh, but I remember I heard I was, I was walking in the, in the in this area and I heard bumping in this hole. And I, I don't know why, but I just walked in. And as I walked in, AJ Styles wrestled Johnny Storm. And I was just like, holy shit i started training the next day again this was after four years and you didn't know who aj or johnny was no idea who they right were. but they're obviously good the, the match was phenomenal yeah. like i just stood by the entrance where i couldn't even like where walk. what what building where that was in bethnal green in uh you've probably wrestled yeah there. i wonder if i was on the show no you were there a year later you wrestled punk uh, I think punk a year. So year that was, yeah, that later. FWA show. This FWA, yeah, yeah. Super. I don't know if super card or no. yeah, something like that. Yes, yeah. yes. I remember that because I was there. So, so then I started going to all the shows, mm. trying to speak to like, who, hey, where do I go train? What do I do? Uh, hooked up with Alex Shane, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he sent me to the FWA school, and I started training again. And uh, it wasn't like riding a bike, like taking bumps and hitting the ropes after four years. Yeah, it was like learning from scratch. Well, do, what was? So, uh, so you put yourself through school while in London, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it was kind of you started from scratch, yeah. Yeah, scratch. Like, like I ended up like talking to my mom here and there. I would send her an email just so she would know I was okay, and she was like, "I'll pay for your studies." And I knew if she paid for it, then I would never have gone. So I was like, "I'll do it myself." Right. You know? <laughs> I understand. Yeah. So like, I just worked like five, six jobs, worked my ass off trying to wrestle on weekends, and then well, but I'm I'm kind of interested in the. I know it's the wrestling podcast, but th like for the four years, like did you, did you find, like I get it, you like soul search backpack, like did you find an answer that you were looking for or anything? Well, I, I kind of figured that that when I walked in there and that, that feeling I got from watching like AJ and I walked in as they did this opening spot and like AJ did this like fucking springboard backflip thing and I was just like, I was like, whoa, this is how much wrestling has evolved because I didn't know anything about indie wrestling too when, back back then, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, it was probably just like shitty headlocks and stuff in yeah, South Africa. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was like, and then I was just like, wow, is this what it's evolved to? This is I can I can do flips and shit. Mm -hmm. So I just need to learn how yeah, to get in here. It's somehow. kind of lucky how also like those two are like the top top profession you know like imagine you walked in and some shitty dudes that, like, you I know, know, like, I, know. I would have walked right out yeah yeah <laughs> so that was kind of like my, my my sign i think and then uh started training and this guy that ran the school he fucking hated me every day he told me you're never gonna make it you're never gonna make really? it yeah mark sloan <laughs> I, I was gonna say i know i didn't, didn't want to say his name because i like mark yeah. um, no no i mean he's, he's a cool guy now but i'm actually glad he did that because that that pushed me harder that you was know? your guy your thing to yeah I, I, and i think this is the story of this podcast is uh you need those people yeah to to push you totally yeah like you need that chip on your shoulder a totally. little bit or someone and it drives you to you need something to drive you to to become a, a something. So, I mean, it's funny to look at you and look at you on TV and be like, "No, you you suck. You'll never make it." Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Is, I mean, that's kind of the the vibe that was at you at first. I guess. I mean, he was also just jealous because I would come in and I would just do all these flips because that's all he taught the, his students was to do like fancy high spots and flips, and I could just do it. Mm. But like you know, I couldn't like put matches together, and I couldn't. I remember they they had a. Do you ever go to that school in Portsmouth? Yeah. Well, God, I remember. Uh, I think you did. Yeah, Dragon and I did like a training. Yes, yes. There. Yeah. So can you, you weren't in it? that, were you? No, I missed it. I was supposed to be. That been remember, that, remember the the high beam. There was like a beam. There was like a low low ish ceiling. Maybe. I would I would springboard jump up to that beam Good. do a shooting star press and then face bump <laughs> and then he's every time i did that like mark sloan he's like leave just leave like <laughs> chase me away well, he, i mean it's funny because a lot of those a lot of people went through i know alex was kind of like 
maybe the hookup guy, but everyone was kind of training through Mark. Yeah. Virtual, yeah, Katie only, Lee. Yeah. My first match was against Virtual. Really? He was the first guy to take the 450 ever. <laughs> Uh, there's a few kids from that camp that that broke through. That's big on the independent circuit in the UK right now. Mm -hmm. Do you, you know who they remember? Uh, Al Laguero is one of them. Okay. Um, Will Osprey, I think, it one of them. Uh, Haskins, Mark Haskins. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's like one or two other I do not remember. Have right you now. gone over and wrestled and seen? Last those? weekend. Last oh, weekend. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, and like, was that the first time you've seen those guys in a while? Or? Yeah, like in 10 years. That's like, funny. I see Alaguero, and he's like, man, this match has been building up for 10 years, you know that? Wow. And then we never got to work because I missed the first show, and I still had two other shows to do. And But yeah, it was cool. And like, I mean, to see all those guys and guys I haven't seen in 10 years, mm -hmm. and, and then all the new talent there, it's so crazy. Um, okay, we, we can not talk about this, but. Uh, or we can. I talk about anything you want, bro. I'm, I'm very like. So about your father. Okay. Have you talked about this? Like, do you? I mean, I've I've told people, but I didn't. Do you, if it, you don't want it on, I don't. I'll uh, I'll do it though. Yeah. Might as well. I'm very interested. Like, you watched him. You watched your father. That's fucked. That's fucked. Hey, that's fucked. The most fucked up thing I've yeah. heard. Yeah. Um, I appreciate you even just saying that. Uh, is that like still? Can you paint a big like a set up a scenario? Am I a dickhead for asking this stuff? Uh, okay, so my dad was kind of like he was a hooker, right? So he was kind of a badass, and uh, he lived in a dangerous area. I cannot tell you how many times I've been in a bank while I was being robbed. I cannot tell you how many AK forty sevens I've had held to my head. I've, you know, we just lived in a dangerous area. Did when that stuff was happening? Did you feel that was normal? It was normal. That still happens in, in the north of Johannesburg all the time. Like when nerves, when that stuff happens, would nerves come up or were you just like, Jesus, these guys doing this again? Like nerves come up in the beginning, but then you kind of get used to it. You're like, you're like, they're like, give me a wallet and your phone. So you just do it. You know, it's, your life's not, not worth it. But my dad wasn't one of those guys. Mm. He would fight. There would be five guys and, and he would fight all of them. And he was constantly on the news and in the newspapers. And like, uh, I saved most of these clippings where he just fucking beat up like four or five guys you know sometimes he gets shot he has so many bullet wounds and he had a an artificial um uh, shoulder uh, scapula yeah. where the one guy stuck like a, a fucking panga which is like a mini mini ninja sword <laughs> into his scapula <laughs> and uh, he would be the I, want, I think one of the coolest stories that i remember was someone tried to carjack him on a bridge so as he went over the bridge two cars like t-boned him and trying to like one guy smashed the the mirror uh trying to grab his wallet and my dad just pulled the keys out stuck it in this guy's eardrum bang this guy with the door open you know fight two four two three of the other guys threw the one guy off the bridge and then the other guy ran away you know shit like that happened all the time and they'd be on the news oh pink panther strikes again and like <laughs> but i get movie stuff man i guess there's one time i don't know the details uh this lady might have she was in trouble or like my dad knew her or she was about to start working for us and she had some problems uh with her husband or fiance whatever it was at the time it would, the guy was a cop too and i remember my uh uh me and my dad shared everything too and everything was blue so we had a blue motorcycle blue car blue everything except the porsche was pink I was right in the castle yeah <laughs> So uh, I was like, hey, dad, I'm going to need the car today. He goes, no, I'm taking the car. You take the bike. I'm like, no, you take the fucking bike. And that, that was our last argument, too. And he grabbed the keys, took, the, took off. I kind of trying to kind of follow him. Um, he got to this guy's house, jumped over, trying to save this lady. So he pushed the guy on the ground. From the ground, the guy pulled the gun and shot him. And it, it went through his chin. So like, just Straight through his head. his head. Yeah, yeah. And you, and so what do you, you, from like, I just, I you just call the police. Like, I know. I just disappeared. I don't know what to fucking do. Like, uh, and then uh, I got home, and everyone, everyone was there already. And they're like, "Hey, we got to tell you something." And I'm like, "Oh shit, I'm in trouble." And they were like, uh, "This is what happened." So they all knew that I wasn't there. They thought I was at school or whatever. And they told me, and I was just like, it just, knew, that, you, "That's you, when it hit me too." Like everything just fucking crashed. Like, so I when was he like, got shot, you didn't think he was dead right away i i don't know what oh dude it was just like a, it was a blur like it was fuck it like i i think all of us have this 
You know, like I've never seen anything like that. Maybe a lot. Of, some people have, but obviously not your our fathers. Yeah, probably a very small percentage. And uh, I, I don't know what any of us would really do. You wonder what you'd do in that situation. Yeah, it's, it was. Yeah, I, I mean, I I didn't know what to do. I knew I had to finish school, which I did. I packed that backpack and I just disappeared. Yeah. It's a fuck. Do you have like a then? You, so you you see him get shot and you just. You peace out as fast as possible. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, of that situation right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just you peeled out and got out of yeah. there. Yeah, nobody saw me. No. That's nuts, man. That's fucking nuts. Do you, do you like, do you dedicate? Uh, sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Do you dedicate to your, like, your wrestling to your father? Oh, totally, man. I I, I wish you could, you could see me now. Um for like the first five years, every time I hit the 450, I would like kind of like do the same signal, which was, you know, pointing up to him in the heavens. And mm -hmm. I stopped doing that after a while because WWE tells you not to do certain things. But, uh, you know, he was, I always think about that shit when I'm in the ring. Yeah. And, and do you, would he ever talk about like WWE and stuff? Did he know about it? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. His plan for me was to be like, hey, don't worry, when the time is right, I'm going to send you over there, you're going to become super famous, and then you're going to come back here, and then we're going to make millions. <laughs> that was his plan. <laughs> that was his plan. Uh, fuck. Like, do you feel a little bit about... Because I know when I was in FCW, you had came to America not, um, not contracted. Yeah. Right? I mean... Like, yeah. Do you, you want to hear that story? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I got kicked out of England, went back to South Africa for like three years. The company that I worked for had a TV deal, okay? So I worked all these shows. It was decent money. Which I remember, like, Carino was on, right? Yeah, Carino, Mikey. Joe Legend. Joe Legend, Whiplash. Uh, I remember being in developmental, Morat. being like, fuck, if I was in developmental, I could be on this South African TV show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I we remember. had a good run, too. Like, it, it lasted three years exactly. Well, for me anyway and then uh i started like sending my my stuff to to wwe every anyone's number who i could find online you know like a producer an agent i started like send it to stephanie hunter <laughs> everyone's name I, I knew that worked at the office i sent hunter wwe at <laughs> gmail.com yeah <laughs> I, no but i even send i even send a, a little D dvd with an eight by ten sent mm -hmm. to the office right because all I wanted them to say is, listen, you're not good enough. And then I would have been happy. You know, I would have carried on with my life. But I got no response and no response and no response. So the last day of the of the taping, uh, I guess I, we did some charity show and I got like 10 grand bonus. And I was like, holy fuck. So I just bought a ticket immediately to the to, to Florida, yeah. knocked on FCW's door. Uh, uh, um, Dr. Tom was there. He's like, no, nah, man, I'm sorry. I can't let you in, blah, blah, blah. Because I... Something happened a week before that where Billy Gunn came down and a bunch of un uncontracted guys came down to train so they wouldn't let anyone in the building. And he goes, but you can speak to Steve Kerr and he's on the road right now. He'll be back in two days. So I hung around for two days. As soon as Steve Kerr pulled up, I was in the parking lot, knocked on his window. He, rolled down, he rolls down the window. He looks at me. He goes, I know you. You're that guy from the jungle. Because <laughs> on, on my 8x10, it was in my backyard. I just had a, someone take a picture on my phone, and there was some weird tree behind me. So I guess it looked like I was in the jungle. <laughs> God, and I remember seeing some of those weird pictures. like, And you probably did, too, like yeah. of the people that would send weird stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, some of us that were conscious, we just rifle through it because we get a good laugh out exactly, of it. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, so, so here's you're the jungle guy the jungle who guy. showed up. So he pulls me into his office, and he pulls out a... Uh, from underneath his desk a whole box of all those stuff that i've sent throughout the years all of it right so i guess everyone at the office send it down to him and say hey check this guy out and see what you think Every, all <laughs> 90 contests yeah. like yeah yeah, yeah. In one box. It's like a diagram yeah. where it all leads right to curd so uh, does he hate you or does he is he like impressed well he hated me at first because i was hate vanson's friend right and he hated hate vanson which is another long story mm -hmm. by the way so he hated me off the bat and if anyone doesn't remember this hate is the guy who was on? Who cut a promo on the Undertaker on TV and then was gone the next week? Yep, which is one of the weirdest things. Weirdest. I'll tell you the whole story in a little bit. But <laughs> let me tell you about this office scenario. So he pulls in D Dusty and Doctor Tom, and I think Norman was there at the time. So they're like, "Oh, let, let's see what you got." So they pop, they pop in the DVD, 
and uh i thought it was my best match ever you know like <laughs> but like i did this porn star gimmick where i come from the ceiling and i had the girls with me you know like really short short speedos mm -hmm. and this is the, the the television show right yeah, so it's yeah. nice production nice production yeah. and everything i have these girls dancing there's some fucking fire pyro and everything and i cut this two, two three minute long promo which i thought wasn't too bad at the time uh i thought the match was great though that's why i sent it in <laughs> So Dr. Tom, after everything is done, Dr. Tom looks around and he goes, well, at least you can entertain, but you can't wrestle for shit. Oh, God. <laughs> In front of you. In front of everybody. <laughs> so I'm still don't sure, not sure if he was serious or not. But anyway, so Curran took a liking to me immediately because I was just like really genuine and nice to him and stuff like that. And then he, uh, he let me stay there for the week. I trained. I had a couple of tryout matches against Teddy. Dusty, let me cut some promos. And uh, yeah, I, I went back home, didn't hear from them, didn't hear from them. Months went by. I called them. I was like, hey, does anyone uh, catch eyes on that? And uh, eventually uh, they go, oh, yeah, 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 we were thinking, we're going to give you a shot. And I was so stoked. That was like the biggest moment of my life at so the time. Wild. God, for every story like that, yeah. you know, there's so many of those people that showed up. And probably knocked on the window as he came up. Oh, yeah. And even, it didn't. Even, yeah. even when I was there, like these fucking guys would knock on the window or knock on the door and they would just get chased away. And uh, he, he even told me, like, you, you're the exception. And after that, we never let anyone. That's why they, they organize those those big camps and tryouts so people sure. can rock up to that instead. But, Yo, I mean, Yoshi did the same way. Mm -hmm. Kern took a, But Kern, it's almost, I mean, it's kind of networking because... He, Yoshi had, there was some guy from. Japan probably sent him over. Yeah, but he, he Japan sent him over to be with a guy who was like from Zero One, who uh. would always come down. I forget what his name was. And he was friends with uh, Steve Madden. I don't know if you remember okay. him. I don't remember the name. Yeah. And so that was, it was like a wrestle. It was a, it was a company that's not defunct. Right. And he had that kind of hooked up and he had nowhere to go. So like there was that. But also I think I was there when Eli Cottonwood knocked on the door also. He did that too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think when I eventually got there, you were there. When, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I remember. I, you were really mean to me, by the way. I was. <laughs> no way, I was mean to you. I think I think everyone was because here's a, here's a new kid. Like even Wait, I was mean to you. Even yeah, I'll no, tell you a story. Okay. I know I, I know you were probably just at a bad place at that time because wow. I I went through it later too. You know, okay. like when you're there for a long time and you know you should be on the road and yeah. what what not. I remember um, training with you, and there's a couple things that I was like, why aren't you picking this up? Is that what, what you're talking about? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. It, I, I thought I picked it up, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a slip slam. I remember that. And I was like, how the fuck am I doing a slip slam wrong? Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I was never properly trained anyway. You know, like we trained ourselves, kind of. <laughs> In the jungle. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so where was I? Yeah, so that time, like, I... <sighs> At FCW, oh yeah, I, I, I just thought you were mean to me, maybe, but I, I felt like everyone was when I walked in, because everyone was like, who the fuck is this kid? Because I wasn't the biggest guy there, I wasn't like, you know, but as soon as I started having matches and people were like, oh shit, he can work, even Dr. Tom, he, Dr. Tom was like my biggest fan, he yeah, was like, oh well, he can actually oh, work. I feel bad, because I, I thought we had a connection, because <laughs> I had, knew all the friends from England. That That's, uh, yeah. That, maybe that was that, a mean-spirited man. That was that one time though, and then, you know, we were fine after that. Oh man, there's all this I don't know about. <laughs> I apologize if you ever no. had a bad. No, I didn't mean to bring that out to be a dick to you now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just got weird. <laughs> no, I'm okay. All right, let's end it there. I was, yeah, I, I guess I was in a, I don't know what kind of place. I always kept, I, I was a good, I was You wouldn't mean towards me. I think you were just mad at something else. And then they put us, remember we, in the, in the training arena, we were doing shit mm -hmm. and we were all supposed to do shit. And like, you and someone else just made me do the same thing like a hundred times. And yeah. I was just like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> uh, maybe Otunga was in the ring at the same maybe, time. Maybe, maybe. I probably. think I remember. That's the one scenario. And then like Kern had me training people for like. Yeah, yeah, thing. that's what it, in the main arena, right? Yes, 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 yes. yes. And I remember being like, oh, like, like maybe look at me, I'm a trainer. Like, maybe I'll just quit <laughs> wrestling and be a trainer for WWE. That was a good time, though. That was my favorite time in wrestling was, was in FCW. Was it? Yeah. I was only there for 10 months. But you said at one point it got bad for you. Or just the frustrations. Yeah, the, you know the frustrations when it's like, it's like up and down. Yeah. And like, you're going to go to the road this week? No, you're not. Like, it was very disorganized at that time. But, you know, it was it was still fun. Because, you know, like, uh, at that time, you Especially know. Especially for you. I mean, fuck, you just spent your 10 grand bonus trying to come over. And then they're like, yeah, you can come over. I know. And that was a cool <laughs> thing, too, in the beginning. Like, so I, I left. 
I left um, South Africa. I only packed my wrestling boots. So cool. So here I here I come to the US. I have no idea where I'm going, where I'm staying, what I'm doing. I have no money. I just have my wrestling boots. And I'm like, hell yeah, I just train five days a week. Right. You're getting paid to train? Yeah, yeah, to yeah. To me, that was great. I didn't have a cell phone, so no one could get a hold of me. <laughs> I didn't have a car, so people had to drive me around. <laughs> and you lived I, a half hour away, I think, right? Yeah, in Brandon. But yeah. I, I didn't have to pay rent or anything. So it was it was great. <laughs> the real life. Um, but I mean, we're, this is we we've, we've been at it a little bit. I know there's many a story, the Hate Vance story included. Maybe one day, uh, one day in the future, we'll get into it. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, I got so many. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to touch on, like quick? Any, anything more recent? You, uh, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, for me, it's just the the story of of how you get to where you're getting. I mean, okay. I, I know. Like right, I know you. You told him kind of the fuck that fuck not fuck off, but you're like you peaced out <laughs> of WWE, which is yeah. admirable. And and also, I mean, I don't know if it's admirable, but like so many people there are always like, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, and no one ever. I know. You know how many people called me the next day and the next week? And like, man, I've been thinking about this for a while, but mm. you pull the trigger, you really have balls. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't the. It was very hard. It was the hardest thing to do. You know, it was, it was my dream job. Mm -hmm. That's where I wanted to be. But, you know, there's, there's other places you can work. There's so many talented guys on the roster right now. I don't think there's enough space for everybody, uh, which sucks because we have a whole fucking network <laughs> where we can build all these shows. And I pitch so many different shows on that. And not, none of that came to fruition. And that's what kind of, like, made me mad. And that's where the frustration grows. Yep. Yeah. And, and I also... It was our, our dream, um, but, like, I, I'm a big believer of, like, you know, like, dreams change almost. Yeah. Like, I get the same thing. Like, obviously, WWE was my dream as a kid, but, like, once you get... And this this has nothing nothing to do with, like, it's not a bash on WWE or whatever, because, obviously, it wasn't, from, it wasn't my place to excel, and, like, you felt that way towards the end, but it's just, like, our... Not our life paths, but like uh, for me, and I assume it's the same. It's like we still love wrestling, oh, yeah. but like that doesn't that's not the dream place anymore. It's like there's another, and I don't know. I'd imagine it's, and you tell me like, do you have this idea of because of the daredevil stuff and like because of all the you've implemented yourself in that life? Do you have this weird like like vision for like hybrid? wrestling or like a hybrid wrestling show or something like you know what i'm saying possibly uh, there's a few there's a few things that, that have come up but uh like for right now like just going back to uh, i'm saying my roots but it's not really my roots like going back to in independent wrestling it, to me so far it's been so much fun you know i, I trademarked the, the Darewolf name mm -hmm. so i'm gonna try and run this character and try to make this character big on the indies i don't want people to remember me as justin gabriel which most people will but you know hopefully in a year from now they'll be like oh shit that's pj black Darewolf. the Darewolf. you know so that that that's my like goal for for right now and 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 just trying to have best matches i can on the indies like even like the other day i did a show and there was only like a hundred people and uh, you know i could have phoned it in but like i did all my best shit like mm -hmm. at the end like everyone stood up and that was cool that was cool to me is and that's <laughs> are you finding a hard transition or are you it was very hard actually because it's like a uh, these kids are so so quick and you you know it's all spot wrestling but mm -hmm. i'm trying to take what I've learned and, and to, like telling stories. I mean, you can use all the same spots. It's just where you put them, like where you place them, like, you know. Mm. Um, but uh, how about the indie lifestyle and getting work and being your own manager and not having Sue from travel call you? I, I mean, it's hard. You like, know what I'm you know, I gotta be on track with all that stuff, but yeah. it's actually fun too, you know? Like I get to be my own boss. Like in April, I took the whole month off to go base jumping. Like I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna not do anything. Mm. And it was great. You know, like if I don't wanna work, I don't want to work this month. I overbooked myself, but whatever, you know. Like yeah. next month, I'll take a break, and it's 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 been great so far, man. Yeah, I, f I like I like like I enjoy the puzzle of like putting matching shows, and like I find that like a weird challenge. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. As acting as an agent, your own agent and booker, I guess yeah, yeah. for me. Uh, cool. Um, your stuff. What's your stuff? Twitter and stuff. Uh, everything is on, everything is on my uh, on my website pjblack.com so you know the Twitter Instagram everything will be on there booking info you can buy some cool merch yep uh, all the upcoming shows are on there I write some blogs when I'm really stoned on there too which doesn't make a lot of sense but people seem to enjoy it okay <laughs> 
<laughs> there's some wrestling stuff and like some non-wrestling stuff. Mm-hmm. There's some. Uh, some comic book stuff which fans have uh, have drawn of Darewolf so mm-hmm. every, everything's on uh, pjblack.com pjblack.com well thank you I appreciate you opening up a little bit man that was nuts uh, I appreciate you driving all the way to my hotel well that was a long <laughs> long drive uh, cool thanks for coming on awesome man thank you so much All right, we end up with uh, PJ there, Justin, and uh, I said I'd kind of get into my mindset of what I was doing or what I was thinking. I didn't know if I should edit it out. I didn't know. It was the first time. It was like, what am I doing? I'm putting this guy on the spot to talk about the time that his father killed himself. But honestly, like mics or no mics, I hear that. And it's it wasn't about like getting a story or getting a scoop. It was... I'm super curious. And then it came to the point in my mind of like, well, do I just ask? Or like, you know, where do manners come in that I don't ask? And that was the point where it's like the mics are on. Is it a job of mine to ask? Is it my job to ask? And no, like uh, this podcast is, it's not a job. This isn't a real thing. This is just meant to have fun with some friends and, and give them an outlet to speak. I don't know if it was the right thing to do on my part. I know you can hear some hesitation on mine because obviously I, I was weirded out by it, but I want I wanted to know. That was my curiosity and maybe it went a little too far. Uh, I don't know. I, I apologize if some people see it going too far or I unapologize for the ones who were like, fuck yeah, like we want to hear that story. And if he's okay with it and he has the right to say no, I gave him a right to say no. Uh, I don't know if he felt any pressure. I don't think he felt any pressure. We talked a bit afterwards, and uh, it was just like anything had happened. And it's you know that's his life. He's 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 dealt with it, and he's dealing with it, and he's making the most of it. And I applaud him for what he did, and uh, I applaud him for what he's doing in the future. The son of the Pink Panther, El Hijo de Pink Panther. Thank you for coming on the show. Before we get out of here, let's get into some plugs and upcoming events. All right, the best way that you can support ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com. I got a Twitter and an Instagram at Colt Cabana, the Facebook slash AOW podcast and slash Colt Cabana. Colt Wrestling at gmail.com is my very public email. Maybe you're a promoter, want to put me on your upcoming show or convention. CutMyPromo.com is my new YouTube show. ColtCabana.com is where I have a website. Missy, thanks for the subway card this week. I really appreciate it. That's what was sent in my P.O. box. You can send me something, too. Upcoming this Friday, June 19th. Hey, if you're in Tokyo, Japan, come on over to Noah.co.jp. Saturday, June 27th, Elmhurst, New York, TeamICW.com. Sunday, June 28th, Providence, Rhode Island, Facebook, slash Beyond wrestling thursday july 9th appleton wisconsin guys i'm joining globalforcewrestling.com friday july 10th waterloo iowa nwhof.org is part of the national wrestling hall of fame a lot of stars i'm wrestling bob holly i'm probably gonna podcast with him too saturday july 11th new albany indiana facebook slash round peg promotions sunday july 12th houston texas clutch city productions.com friday july 17th marionette park illinois aa wrestling.com saturday july 18th clinton township michigan xicw detroit.com july 25th and 26th gathering of the Juggalos, Thornville, Ohio, JuggaloGathering.com. And August 7th through the 31st, Edinburgh, Scotland, the stand.co.uk is where you can watch my comedy show every single night at 11 p.m. with Brendan Burns, except for Sunday nights when I will be wrestling for insanewrestling.co.uk. And right before that, I will also be doing live podcasts Sunday late e- Sunday early evening-ish. Tickets are also at insanewrestling.co.uk. All right, that is the show for the week. We are done. I am done. I am done, done, done. Big thank you to you at home for listening every single week. Regardless of the guest, you're enjoying the chat. I do appreciate that. Big thanks to Justin Gabriel, a.k.a. PJ Black, back on the independent scene. Thanks to Cable Guy Jeff and Stu Stone, Kid Russell and Matt Jenkins, Dane Miller with some tech. Let's thank our sponsors, HighSpots.com. Hundreds of full-length titles available to download, plus all those $5 wrestling titles, AMA knee pads, gears, download stuff. Developmentally speaking, I'm on that new one with Kurt Hawkins. He's the host. Let's thank OneHourTees.com. They help run ProWrestlingTees.com, who sells independent wrestling T-shirts directly from the independent wrestlers themselves. You're doing a mitzvah by supporting those guys at ProWrestlingTees.com slash your favorite wrestler. TweakedAudio.com slash Colt the Earbuds that I use. Get over 30% off of free shipping just because you listen to this show. That's it. I've had a lot to do today getting ready for this. I've had one day home getting ready for this trip, and then I am out. 
for a championship match in Tokyo, Japan. Very excited. It's me and Hero versus Killer Elite Squad, Lance Hoyt and Harry Smith. But man, had to go to the cleaner, had to buy baby oil. That was a real thing. I had to buy baby oil. Had to go to the post office to drop off some stuff. I got to get a fake spray tan. Went to the gym. Had to buy some protein stuff. I'm sewing an outfit. Anybody out there make jackets? Anybody want to make me a wrestling jacket that I will happily pay for? Are there any creative types out there? Are any of you 7% ladies sewers? That was kind of sexist. I sew too. I was sexist against myself. I should be mad at you. And by you, I mean Colt. Colt, I'm mad at you from Colt. All right, I got, I got so much more stuff to do. That's the show. This has been The Art of Wrestling. For Colt Cabana, I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks. Do they say cheers in South Africa? Uh, in England, but I lived there long enough. So, What do they say in South Africa? Uh, we can say ciao. 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 Okay. Or senior latte boot. That's what I meant. <laughs> senior latte boot. <laughs>